So in the last episode, we did our planning for a trip to Italy, discovering various cities, more about them, not just a tourist trip, but a real trip to discover the roots and how would we live there. This episode's all about enjoying those cities and what we discovered about each one and what we liked and didn't like. We did a 12-day trip and explored six different cities, which originally we thought was way too ambitious, but really worked <laughs> out quite well. Yeah. Well, you did a great job planning it. We had a great time. Welcome back to Finding Gina Marie, our video podcast about discovering family and our eventual relocation to Europe. This is episode 13. If you've missed any of the other episodes, please go to findinggenamarie.com, where you can find links, information, and ways to contact us. I'm Kevin. And I'm Judy. So as we dig into these cities, you may have a ton of suggestions that we didn't think of or that we thought about and discarded, but we're not perfect. So if you think that there's some place we should have explored, let us know in the comments. We reached out to friends on Twitter for their recommendations. Uh, Kevin especially has friends all over the world. And so we took their opinions into consideration. Definitely. I was part of several Facebook groups and kind of crowdsourced those ideas, did Google searches on places to live in Italy and kind of looked at those and then did individual deep dives into each of those cities to see what the pluses and minuses might be. And compared them to our criteria list that we talked about in the last episode. Right. And also Reddit. There were, there are a lot of people who have opinions on Reddit about various people things. People have opinions on Reddit? Really? <laughs> Shocking. That is shocking. That's, that's news to me. <laughs> it just helped us narrow things down a little bit. Right. So although I did all of the planning for the trip itself, or the largest bulk of it, Kevin handled all of the train transportation. <laughs> yeah, and the idea was to try to minimize the amount of time we spent on a train traveling between cities so we could maximize the time we had in each city. So the heart of northern Italy is really Bologna. It is in between most of the cities that we wanted to get to. And I think we decided a few times to go to different cities. And then I think we finally worked out the path we wanted to go to. So once we flew into Bologna, we really didn't spend any time there. We immediately got on a train and traveled to Lucca, which was our first destination. You want to tell them why we picked Lucca? We chose that in part because I have a cousin who had been there and said it was a lovely little town and she really enjoyed it. It was unique for us because it's a walled city. Well, the wall itself is a historic piece of Italy. So going there right away, you're experiencing history just with the wall alone. We've seen cities that had remnants of walls, but this was actually all still there. Right. And one of the cool things about the walls is that they're huge. And I don't think we fully appreciated it until we were there. I know I did not appreciate yeah. it fully. There's playgrounds up there and all kinds of things that you can do. And you're also looking down on the city. And it just sounded like an interesting part of history that you weren't going to find everywhere. Yeah. And we did. We biked to the top of the wall. We walked around it. There are little parklets everywhere. It was just a really beautiful differentiator for Luca. I, I love that part of it. And I love the fact that you had some place to go and chill and relax. And it really was a very beautiful city. Oh, yeah. We took a tour where the guide took us on the wall and to various little pockets of the city so that we could get an overview of what it looked like. I, I really highly recommend if you've never traveled by bike in a city that you are encouraged to do so because that's been some of the best travel experiences that we've had. It really gives you a way to kind of get a lay of the land without investing a lot of time the way walking would, and you can get to see a lot of sites pretty easily. Yeah, another nice part about Luca was inside the wall, there were areas that you could go into and see history there, or they had an art exhibit that was held in one of those spots. The walled city did not allow you to have a car inside the city. Oh, yeah. And that's a really noteworthy thing about any place that you might live. It didn't really matter to us. In fact, it was favorable to us mm -hmm. because we we don't want to own a car. And it also meant that the city was extremely walkable, extremely bikeable, because it was deliberately not parkable. Beautiful city, very Italian. It felt authentic. Everything was beautiful inside the wall. But we really did kind of discover most of the city in two days. There was definitely more to see. Sure. However, this trip was not 
meant to be for us a trip of doing a lot of touristy things. What would it feel like day after day being in the city? Where do you buy groceries? Right. And how do you just get around? And what kind of tourism do you have to fight against? And just really understanding a city as a native would versus a tourist. Yeah, I think Luca was missing water for us. There was no river through it. it wasn't really near any big bodies of water that you could get to quickly. So that was a detractor. And the size for me was a little bit of a detractor. Otherwise, we really loved that city. That was right away a good start for our trip because I felt this is authentic. This is what we want. We want to feel like we're living in history like this. Right. And it was lovely, but it felt a bit too small for us. So after Luca, we went and visited an old friend, the beautiful city of Florence. Firenze. Firenze. Yeah, I love going to Florence. One of the detractors of Florence before we even decided that it might be a place we live is tourism. It's a big tourist city. And the one year we were there before COVID, it was really crowded Gorgeous. I mean, it was fun to be around so many people and so much energy and excitement, but I was kind of worried about where would we live in the city and is there a spot that's not always touristy so we can enjoy our maybe quiet time and then go to the tourist spots like we do in San Francisco. I think I really wasn't so concerned about that initially. I was more concerned about the fact that it's an expensive city. In my mind, I half wrote it off because, oh, this will be too expensive for us to live in. But we really love that city so much. Let's go there and explore it. First of all, we got a hotel that wasn't in the heart of the tourist area of the city. And that changed our path walking into Florence. We saw it from a different angle. So we found a street that we liked after wandering a bit, uh, Via Maggio, which actually was the kind of street we were looking for, right? Yes, that was wonderful. And that was across the bridge, the right. Porto Vecchio. But I also felt like by going in through this alternate route than we normally do, we encountered a lot more tourism than I had remembered from previous years. And a lot more traffic. That sure. way in was a lot of cars, a lot of busy areas, a lot of busy shops too. But I felt like we weren't sitting in a quiet piazza. We were actually sitting on a busy street. It's like, oh, I don't want to sit on a busy street and drink my coffee with fumes from cars. I like the piazza area. So yeah, we walked in through the... The leather district. Right. It just felt a little bit too touristy for what we're looking for. Yeah. And I also felt like it was not as populated with apartments or places that we would like to actually live in for an extended period of time. And I think that was exactly what we were trying to do on this trip. Not look at it through the eyes of a tourist. Hey, we're going to live here every day, walk on these streets, get from point A to point B. Where's our place we're going to hang out? What's the stuff we're going to do daily? And for me, Florence didn't offer as many of those as I thought it was going to. In our favor was the fact that we have this Leatherworks Michelangelo that we've gone to each time we've been yeah. there. His attitude was, if I can help you along the way, I am more than happy to do that. And you have been good customers. So that really was a plus. The yeah. idea that you could have relationships or we could be bringing relationships and that would maybe like vouch for an apartment or oh, yeah. some of the things that I think Italians want to know that you know somebody that <laughs> they know uh, just to make things more copacetic. In 2019, we had intended to go to Parma as a detour when Venice was underwater. And things had changed enough that we were able to go to Venice after all, even though it was a condensed part of our trip. But it meant that the research we'd done on Parma was out the door. Yeah. But this trip, we decided to include it. There were some really good food ideas there. And that was something we really missed on the last the previous trip, it was, ah, we should have gone there. We should have just taken some time out of that trip. For as much as we wanted to see this authentic food of Parma, let's not kid ourselves. The Lucchese food was incredible. Oh, wow. It was really, really outstanding. In fact, I'll, spoiler alert, every city we went to had the most <laughs> delicious food. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it would be very difficult to say where would you go back to because the food was far and away above. There was no place that I wouldn't go back to for the food. It but was amazing. Each city was unique in its food. For being so close together, half an hour to an hour on train, their food types were very different. And that did influence us a little bit because, you know, sometimes you want a pizza and sometimes you want some more spaghetti with uh, tomato sauce. And some of these cities, that's not their specialty. Parma was one of those for me. It was more of the sauces, the gravies, the meats, the cheeses, but not so much of the tomato sauce. Sure, that's true. And I am a huge tomato 
sauce fan. One of the things that surprised me about Parma, people did not speak as much English. And I think that that's perfectly fine. In fact, one of our criteria is to have a city that speaks Italian. Something about the city when you first approach it affects me heavily. So when we got off the train in Parma, I felt like the first impression of the city wasn't as nice. And it wasn't run down or anything. It just wasn't very Italian looking. It, it kind of looked a little more just like a city. And some of the buildings were a little more ordinary. They weren't historic. You know, that same kind of thing happened in Lucca. So we were in the walled city and it was really gorgeous. And then we decided, well, what if we couldn't live in the city? What if we had to live just outside the walled city? So we walked the city outside and it just didn't feel the same. It felt more ordinary. It felt less like you're experiencing an Italian city and more you're just experiencing a European city. And that's fine. Nothing wrong with it, but just not what we were looking for. So my first impression of Parma was kind of that same thing. It's like, well, maybe down in the central part of the city, we'll see something nicer. But my first impression is just a little rough. One of the things that I didn't really love about Parma either, although there was technically water, it was more like dried up water. It was a dried so, up river. Yeah. <laughs> dried up river. It just felt a little bit rough around the edges. And that wasn't what we were looking for. Right. There was a big park over on the one bridge we walked across. But it also felt like that was a main street on that bridge. It didn't feel like a romantic Italian bridge. It felt like a useful car bridge and people could also walk across it. One of the things that I enjoy about traveling with Kevin is that I think we're both pretty open-minded about making last minute pivots. And we're not so set in our path that we're not willing to change. And when we felt like Parma really wasn't gonna be a city that we were going to seriously entertain, we made a decision to spend an extra day somewhere else and cut time from a couple of other cities. That worked out really well. Yeah. One thing that did happen on our last day in Parma was that we were at a restaurant and we ran into a man from Napoli and uh, someone who was a native of Parma. And we just had this random, fabulous conversation. Across three tables. Across three tables. Yeah. And they weren't close tables. No. The, the one gentleman was a professor and he shared a whole bunch of history information, yeah. which was a little bit difficult because he had a really strong accent. Yeah, he was a good promoter of that city for sure. Because he had left it for a while to work at another university and then he came back. His whole family was from there. Right. And his father had told him, it's okay that you're going because you will come back. Yeah. Everybody always comes back to Parma. Again, it kind of tied to this whole idea that it is a very rich family centric city. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing and something that we really appreciate. Definitely. So now we've been to two new cities that we've never been to before. Right. And now we're going to our second city that is an old familiar face. That is Verona. We made the decision to go back to Verona because we really had an incredible experience when we were there last time in 2019. Even but though we were, it was raining and cold, it was, was not the best weather to experience that city, but I had some still vague fond memories of it. One of the things that you had mentioned was how colorful of a city it was. Right. And we had one of the best dining experiences on one of our last days in Verona. And we, it was a short trip, yeah. but there were some places that we had been to that were just very memorable and left us with some warm fuzzies that we thought, okay, we want to explore this city more. And in fact, this is the city that we decided to extend because we had made the decision that Parma wasn't going to really be an option. So although we'd been here before, we thought, let's spend a little bit more time because this might actually be the one. Yeah. As I said before, in some of the other cities, the first impression is so important for me. Walking into Verona, arriving at the train station, coming into the city, it was just as I remembered. It was very colorful. The architecture was gorgeous. I had my camera out immediately. I was taking photos. I was just thrilled at that first experience. For one thing, that we weren't in the rain and we got to actually see some of the city immediately. And I really wanted to just dig into the city and find out more about it at that point. So there were several things on our list of criteria that Verona had in its favor. It had great architecture. It was a very bikeable city. In fact, one of the cool things that came out of COVID was that they had converted a lot of their vehicular spaces into... Pedestrian and biking areas. Right. Yeah. And so they had outdoor 
cafes and like they'd extended outdoors some of their indoor restaurants. Yeah, some so, of their piazzas too that used to be just a small area and cars would go around a circle or those were gone now as far as car traffic and they had barricades. And now you just had more people, more space for us. Also, there is a river and <laughs> there's water in there's it. There's water in it. <laughs> it actually flowed. <laughs> I loved walking along the river. We spent a lot of time exploring the different areas of the city from the vantage point of how is the river walk? How is the feel of the different areas that are connected to the river? Not just the initial ones you see when you're in the heart of the city, even outside the river. And some of those were actually excellent. We found some areas that weren't right in the city center, but still felt like, wow, this is a nice area. I wouldn't mind being out here. It's only a bridge across to the interior of the city. I don't know. I could do it. And one of the cool things was they have rental bikes. They're making it very convenient for people to get around on vehicles other than cars. When you are going to have that kind of a feature, it also means that you have accompanying infrastructure for it, which is really positive. We also knew that it wasn't going to be as expensive to live in as yeah. Florence. While Florence was maybe more doable than we thought, this will be also a little bit cheaper. Yeah. And we actually looked around some of the apartment prices for all these cities while we were in each one. How many were there? How many were for sale? and how many were for rent, because a lot of them were for sale. It's like, we don't want to buy an apartment or a house. We want to just rent when we first start, because we might switch cities. There was a lot of rentals in Verona, and they didn't seem that expensive. The area of town that was like a sweet spot for me was bigger in Verona than a lot of the other cities. Luca obviously was tiny, tiny, so everything was a sweet spot within the wall. But Verona is bigger, not as spread out as Florence, but still bigger. And it felt like it was a lot more attractive spots no matter where you went. Very few zones we went to that felt like, wow, we couldn't live here. It's like, no, we could probably live here. It's just a few blocks to something a little more pretty or you're only four blocks away from the river because the river does a big U in that city. So you have a lot of space along the sides of the river. And it also has an, an incredible arena and they've turned it into a place where they have music festivals. And what's unique about it is that the sound doesn't actually travel from it. So you could live literally a stone's throw from the arena and not have an opera in your backyard. But the worst case scenario, you've got some opera going on. That's not a bad no, thing. No, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> I just thought that there was a little bit more culture than I expected to be there. So we were trying to get a bike tour and we had it scheduled and we went to the location, stood around there, it was in front of one of their theaters and nobody was showing up. We're there alone, just the two of us, nobody's showing up. We're like, got the right time. And you had to call them and they were very apologetic. They messed up. So they asked us to come back the next day. We, we said, thank God we extended this trip. So we have time the next day. So we went back again <laughs> and stood in front of the theater and then no one showed up. <laughs> like, oh no, are we doing this again? But then someone rushed up hurriedly and she was all apologetic and she looked very familiar. Right away. I knew it was the food tour guide tour from the food tour that we had been on in yeah. Verona the last time we were there. She was a wonderful tour guide. The fact that we knew her. <laughs> right. We had a lot to talk about, but we let her know at the very beginning that we were more interested in exploring neighborhoods and things like that versus the typical tourist stuff. And she was super excited because yeah. she felt like some of the things that we were going to see would have been duplicative to our food tour. Right. And she said, now I get to show you all kinds of things. And that she we was wouldn't... shocked. She goes, you want to, you're thinking of moving here? It's like, yes. She goes, oh, well, that's wonderful. You know, and I have a friend who does real estate stuff and he can help you. It's like, see, this is the kind of stuff you want to get. You want to bump into these people multiple times in a city like we did in Florence with our leather guy. She was this great potential resource for, hey, if you need some place to live, he can help you or give you advice on things that you need to know about living in Italy. That's great. So we have that in our back pockets. Unexpected. These are the lovely things about some of our trips. By just doing something like these tours, we bump into the most unusual or cool situations. And the great people we've met on these trips has been 
Awesome. It just adds the pleasure of traveling. So at this point, Verona is really at the top of our list. Yeah. The next destination, we cut short so that we could extend Verona. Venice was nice this time because there wasn't high water. <laughs> it was actually a city you could walk around. And we figured, okay, now we're going to actually get to explore the city and understand what it's like. And it wasn't as nice as we thought. No, we had never intended this to be one of the cities that we considered no, no, to, no. to live in. We thought, you know what, let's give Venice its proper due yeah. and stay a little bit longer. And it was lovely to go to, but getting our luggage from point A to point B, luckily they had a water taxi because there's no way we could have taken up all over the bridges. Venice is a city built on hundreds of islands. It's it's so many bridges. There's so many things you have to cross. There's so many ups and downs the stairs. You can see the luggage people taking this luggage for other people around the city and they're working their butts off. And we took a water taxi to our hotel, and then we started to explore the city. And it was nice. I mean, there were some nice places that we walked to. Some of the restaurants were hard to get into. Uh, some of the places we had to get to meant we had to spend 20 minutes going up and down bridges just to get over to another spot. And then we found out, oh, sorry, no, that place doesn't have any seats. So now you got to go someplace else. It was a lot of wasted time. And this actually wasn't even their high season. No. But it was indicative of how busy it could be. And one of the biggest deterrents for me was that it really felt as though people are having to cater to tourism. Yeah. I don't think they want to do that either. It's somewhat the nature of the beast. Yeah. We want to live in a mixed-use city where you have shops and residents and people living in the city and supporting the city. And tourism may add some more money to the city, but it's not the primary reason why that city exists. Right, and we don't want to have something happen and we are underwater. Oh, that too. <laughs> it was never on our list. It was just someplace that we felt like we need to give another chance to and see it when it was dry. And we right. did. And there are lovely parts of the city, but it definitely was not on our list no. for many, many, many reasons <laughs> to Imagine getting live in. furniture on that city. <laughs> No way. I don't even really know how people who I, are disabled can I get around. And like, <laughs> Hey, <laughs> I'm old. I'm not crippled <laughs> yet. <laughs> so our final destination is a city that we thought and rethought and thought again about. Yeah. And partially because we'd been there before. Right. And that city is Bologna. I had good memories of it. You didn't quite have as many. We revisited it in some respects because obviously we've made this the hub. Yeah, one of its big pluses was the fact that all trains go through Bologna. So if you want to get to anywhere in northern Italy or even going down to Rome, Bologna is ideal. But I didn't have fond memories of it. I thought of it as compared to Verona, this was a gray city. And of course it was rainy again that time too. So I want to give it a second chance, but it felt like all the colors and all the beauty of Verona were missing from Bologna. And you had a different opinion. You said, it seemed like it had a lot of cool stuff in it. I said, well, let's give it a chance. Let's make it our final spot, but also kind of give it a couple days or more to really explore it and make sure I'm wrong <laughs> about this. And you were wrong about it not being colorful. I think you corrected yourself and said, okay, I remember it being more gray. There were gray areas. I think I think just the last time we were there was like that. It's still not the Verona fairy tale type colors. You got us a loft that when we looked out, we could actually see what the crowds were like, what things were going on, the piazzas and the spot we were staying in, there was no car access. Right. Which confused the cab driver because I kept giving him this address and he's like, I can't get there, and, but he's staying in Italian and I'm trying to speak Italian and I speak poor Italian, so. Caveman that, Italian, and what's not as bad as you want to say yeah, it was. But I actually got information back and forth between the two of us and I felt like, well, that's a win right there. I got us to our hotel. I talked to a cab driver. That's I can, I can say this whole trip was a success at that point. For the fact that it's so central it really is not as well appointed as we would have liked it to be. Our experience is that the, the jetway is not into the airport, it's to the ground. And then you have to take a tram to the airport itself. Yeah. And then the airport requires a commute to the city center. So I was picturing my mother and how hard it would be and other visitors to kind of navigate all of that. Yeah. So it's this hub city, but it really isn't necessarily so easy to get to and from. Yeah, it's a bigger city. In fact, we ate uh, dinner one night at a restaurant that was outside the city wall, which is not a full city wall, but it 
the remnants of what's there on the city wall. And to get there, it was a much longer walk than I expected. And it kept going. <laughs> and we're like, and I think you were getting hangry on this trip. There, I think there was some, I think we had just a little squabble, which <laughs> 12 days together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you spend a little bit of that. <laughs> but the, the place was really lovely. It was very family run. It was a Sunday. And it seemed like it was family in the restaurant, just having family dinner on a Sunday, which was Really good to see. But that walk to get out there and the experience of the walk out there felt like the city was spread out and not spread out in a great way that felt like, oh, we want to go to all these different spots of the city. So that, to me, made it a great hub city, but maybe not a great livable city because there was no water there either. Yeah, Verona is this romantic, gorgeous city. I will say one of the cool things about Verona that we didn't mention is the fact that although there are to there's tourism there, it's for people who are wanting to do a day trip. There's not a ton to see or it's not touted as like this great city that you need to spend a bunch of time in. So therefore, the evenings are really more about locals and people who move there yeah. <laughs> want to be locals. Well, so that's one of the differences that I noticed right away between Bologna and Verona was in Verona, we found multiple spots where we sat out in a piazza and had coffee and or a lunch or something else. And it just felt very relaxing and very inviting to just sit for a long time and enjoy ourselves. Where in Bologna, I felt like the areas where you had those coffee shops were extremely busy. Like it was a, sure. there was one major area where everyone kind of went to do things by the, by the two towers. And it felt like we can't get into a coffee shop. You can't just sit and relax on a piazza. We had to sit inside on the one. And I don't know, it all felt like this is not what I want to do every day. I don't want to fight crowds just to get a cup of cappuccino. I want to relax and enjoy ourselves. And it felt like Verona gave us more opportunity for that. At one point we considered Pisa, oh, yeah. but we discounted it because I think there's a lot of fog and maybe not great weather. When we had been to Bologna, they were bragging about the fact that they actually have two leaning towers. Yeah. And that is quite cool. Yeah. Why uh, go for one tower when you can have two? <laughs> they, they've actually had to remove pieces of it to of the stabilize The one that's really it. leaning, yeah. Yes. I think also because it was this academic city, there was a protest that was oh, happening. Yeah. And true. that was actually kind of interesting. And I appreciate the fact that there were people standing up for, standing up for yeah. their beliefs. It happens all the time in San Francisco, and I appreciate it. I, I want people to be active in government and social issues. So that was a plus for it, definitely. Right. Again, it was a city that we were tired of before we were finished. Maybe it was just a little too big and harder to navigate than we would have liked it to be. Yeah, and I don't want to put any negative on the city, but it wasn't the kind of place our day-to-day -day experiences were what we wanted. That's why we worked so hard on planning this trip, and that's why we took so much input from everybody that was helping us with this stuff. This is a major life move, and I want to do what we did here, which was find a place where we could enjoy living in an area of town in San Francisco that we could enjoy going having coffee, and just sitting outside or a park near us, the same kind of experience. We're not going to go backwards if we're going to a city in Europe. So Verona was at the top of my list. And if that wasn't going to work, I think we were defaulting to maybe Florence. But I think Verona is just so high up there right now because of the experience we had overall. So one of the sad parts about this whole six city trip, because we're approaching my dual citizenship through a 1948 petition with the courts, it doesn't allow us to live in Italy while we're obtaining dual citizenship. So for as much of a bummer as that was, we had another high that when we got home, there was some more optimistic news that we'll share with you in a later episode. Now, all the stuff you're talking about with the residency and the visas, that's what we're getting into in the next episode and trying to figure out how we get a residency visa in some city in Italy or another place in Europe and dealing with the Schengen. If you're enjoying following us so far, please give us a like on YouTube. Please leave us comments. Hit us up on findinggenemarie.com. We have contact information on there. Until next time. Until next time.